I know what you're probably thinking, Alex, you have reviewed the Q50 absolutely to death, but there is logic to the madness of why we are doing another Q50 review so soon. That's because I have finally, after about two years, gotten my hands on the elusive 3.0T model. But because we have reviewed the Q50 so many times before, this video is going to be a little bit shorter than normal, we're going to skip a lot of sections, and we're going to focus just on the 3 liter 300 horsepower engine. The first thing to know is that the Q50 recently received a very mild refresh, so we have a slightly tweaked front bumper that's a little bit more aggressive than before, and we have a few more standard features in the Q50 than we had in the 2017 model year. But that also means that the basics of the Q50 have remained about the same. The 3.0T model that we're looking at right here is the direct competitor to something like the BMW 330i. This starts just over $38,000, comes standard with a moonroof, real wood trim, and of course the 300 horsepower engine. That means that we get more standard power in the Q50 3.0T than the 330i. It's also worth noting that the Q50 3.0T starts in Lux trim, not pure trim, so we get more standard features in this than we get in the base 2 liter turbo model. One of the things that makes the Q50 a little bit different than the 3 Series, the A4, or the C-Class is the overall size. This is a few inches larger than the average compact luxury sedan in America, and a lot of that room goes to the rear passenger compartment, so things are going to be a little bit more comfortable back here than some of the shorter entries. The 2018 refresh didn't really do much for the side profile of the Q50, although we do get these new tail lamps out back. Dual exhaust tips are standard, and we are driving the sport trim of the 3.0T. Under the hood, we find Infiniti's brand new 3 liter twin turbo V6 engine. This produces 300 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque in the trim that we're driving right here. This engine is, of course, closely related to the Red Sport 400's 3 liter twin turbo engine, but there are a few architectural differences in order to help that engine give you that extra 100 horsepower. Power is sent to the rear wheels via a 7 speed automatic transmission, and you can also opt for Infiniti's all wheel drive system if you want a little bit of added traction. It's worth noting that although the Q50 is a rear wheel drive vehicle and the majority of this engine is actually behind the front axle, we actually get a little bit more weight up front than we find in something like the BMW 3 Series. The front weight bias has a slight effect on neutral handling, but this is still better balanced than something like an Acura TLX. When it comes to front seat comfort, it's important to know that the Q50 does not have the same range of motion available in the driver's seat as we find in some of the luxury competition. For instance, we don't have a four-way adjustable lumbar support. Although the model we're driving does have inflatable side bolsters and a power extending thigh cushion. That helps this seat get about 8 or 9 out of 10 points, depending on exactly what you want to compare this to. Because the Q50 3.0T is the more direct competitor to something like the BMW 330i, not the BMW 340i, then I actually think this gets 9 out of 10 points when compared directly to that BMW model. The important thing to remember, of course, is that we don't get a four-way adjustable lumbar support. So if this lumbar support is hitting you in an unusual spot for your body shape, then this may not be an option for you. Moving to the back, it's important to remember that the Q50 is still a compact luxury sedan, not a mid-sized luxury sedan. So although we find a little bit more legroom back here than some of the competition, this is still not going to be as much as the next size category up or as much as you find in your average mid-sized family sedan in America. However, I still have about two inches of legroom sitting behind myself. A common problem in this category is rear seat headroom, and my head does touch the ceiling if I try and sit upright. I actually have to slouch just a little bit in order to put my head against the headrest. If I move all the way over to the right side of the vehicle, my feet are just a little bit tight in that footwell, but I have just about enough room to sit right back here behind this front seat, adjusted for a six foot five passenger. Although legroom is generous, the overall design of the Q50, especially its rear suspension, means that we get a little bit less cargo room back here than in some of the other options. That means that we were only able to fit three of these 24 inch roller bags back here. As with many compact luxury cars, we don't find a spare tire under the cargo area load floor. Instead, the Q50 uses run flat tires. If you want a detailed look at the Q50's interior, be sure to check out the 2018 first drive review on the Q50. In this video, we're going to dive right into the drive section. This drive section is going to be a little bit shorter than normal because we're just focusing on the 3.0T model that we're driving right here. Let's get the numbers out of the way first. 0 to 60 happens in 5.3 seconds, and we're driving the rear wheel drive model. I suspect that if you got the all wheel drive model, you'd still get right around 5.3, even though there's some additional weight in the vehicle. And that's because from a stop, first gear is pretty aggressive in this vehicle, and Infinity is also very aggressive at boost right in first gear. That means that we get just a little bit of wheel slip from the rear out of this car 
and that would not happen in the all-wheel drive version. Even though we have that extra weight, that's likely going to make them right about the same 0 to 60 time. That's notably quicker than the 2.0T model, which came in right at 6.9 seconds 0 to 60, and behind the 400 horsepower option, which does it in 4.5 to 4.9. I realize that 4.5 to 4.9 sounds like a pretty big variance, but it's all traction in the Red Sport 400. The model can definitely do 4.5 if it can connect in the back. The one thing to note is that no version of the Q50, the model we're driving, or the 400 horsepower version has a mechanical limited slip differential from the factory, and that likely does have an impact on the two-wheel drive 0 to 60 times. Braking scores in this particular model came in at 118 feet from 60 miles an hour to zero. That is definitely shorter than the 2.0T, but not quite as short as the Red Sport, obviously, because of the tires that we have on this particular model. Now, this Q50 does, of course, have run-flat tires because we don't have a spare tire in the back. And the run-flat tires are going to have an impact on the ride, as well as the overall vehicle's dynamics. In terms of overall handling, I'm going to give this vehicle a B. This is not quite as grippy as some of the competition. However, keep in mind this is going to be less expensive than buying 300 horsepower from most of the competitors. So this is still going to be a very good value. And if you compare this to like priced competition, not like powerful competition, then this is going to handle just about as well as your average BMW 330i, for instance. The Q50 that we're driving has Infiniti's adaptive suspension system. It is adjustable via the drive mode selector knob right here in the center console. I think even in the softest mode, which is what we're in right now, the suspension is still just a little bit too firm for my particular preferences. I would prefer something that got a little bit softer in the standard mode and perhaps just about as firm in Sport and Sport Plus because if you want to corner carve in this vehicle, then Sport and Sport Plus are exactly where you want the suspension to be. However, it does mean that there are other vehicles in this segment that are going to be a little bit more livable than what we're driving right here. Back out here on a paved road, the firm suspension is definitely noticeable. It's going to make this a little bit less comfortable for long highway trips. Steering feel is something that a decent number of people have complained about in the Q50, whether we're talking about the direct adaptive steering system or the standard electric assist system. Personally, I'm still undecided as to whether I like direct adaptive steering or not. There are a certain number of advantages with that system, because the car can try and counteract crosswinds in the vehicle, helping you go straight. It's a little bit less tiring out on longer highway trips, and it can also help reduce steering bump feedback if you're driving along potholes. Your steering wheel is not going to be jerking and jarring quite as much because the system can compensate for that. However, it does feel unusual compared to other steering assistance systems. Now that said, even the model with the standard electric assist system is not as engaging as the Q50's predecessor, the G37. In our cabin noise score, this came in at 71 decibels, which makes this just a little bit louder than some of the options, like the Mercedes-Benz C300, but fairly average for this segment. Fuel economy varies greatly depending on how you're driving the Q50. If you drive this very gently and you're out on open highways, you can get above the EPA score. However, in our mixed driving cycle, we've been averaging about 21 miles per gallon, so I'm going to give this a C- when it comes to overall fuel economy. This is EPA rated for 22 to 23, depending on whether you get rear wheel drive or all wheel drive, but that does fall behind some of the competition. Part of that has to do with the fact that the Q50 is larger than some of its direct competitors, but a lot of it also likely has to do with the 7-speed automatic transmission that we find in this vehicle. The 7-speed auto has a very aggressive first gear, helping give us excellent off-the-line acceleration, but it doesn't really seem to be focused on fuel economy. Overall, out on the road, the 3.0T is exactly what you'd expect from a middle child engine. This is notably faster than the base 2.0-liter engine and a little bit slower than the Red Sport 400. As we'll talk about in a minute, value is the big deal for the 3.0T, because instead of buying a 2.0-liter four-cylinder engine from the competition, you could get this 3.0-liter twin-turbo engine, and this is an awful lot more fun than everybody else's 2.0-liter four-cylinder, and this engine sounds incredible. It has a very good engine note to it. Now, it's not quite as exciting as Infiniti's previous generation naturally aspirated 3.7-liter engine, but it is still one of the best turbocharged engine noises out there. For 2018, the Q50 starts at $34,200 for the base model, but we are of course talking about the 3.0T trim today, and that starts at $38,950. When comparing across the trim line, keep in mind that the 3.0T engine comes only in Lux trim, therefore the jump is a little bit smaller than it may otherwise appear. As with the other engines, all-wheel drive can be added to the 3.0T in any trim for about $2,000. The Sport trim, which is what we were driving this week, started at $40,650, and as tested, was right around $50,000.
Although there were a few options that our particular model did not have, the price tag overall of the 3.0T trim doesn't really step on the toes of the Red Sport 400, which starts at $51,000, or even the Hybrid, which starts just over $50,000. Moving on to our takeaways, you will also notice that the 3.0T trim of the Q50 is right around the same price as many of the 2.0-liter turbo engines that we find in the competition. Although the Infiniti 3.0-liter turbo engine might not be quite as efficient as some of the competition's 4-cylinder engines, it is going to be noticeably smoother and it's also going to sound better if you like to drive your car a little bit harder. Infiniti has long been known for their excellent V6 engines and that continues with this new family. Although obviously not quite as much fun as the 400 horsepower tune of Infiniti's 3 liter engine, this V6 is still going to give you a broader power range than we find in the competition's 2 liter turbos. In addition to the excellent engine, the Q50 is also very well priced, we have a very generous back seat, and it has also been very reliable. On the downside, the trunk in the Q50 is a little bit on the small side, and the interior is starting to feel a little bit behind the times. Infiniti has done an excellent job at keeping the exterior of the Q50 up to date, and I really do like the way the front end of the Q50 looks, but the interior is starting to feel just a little bit behind the times, especially when it comes to the infotainment system, which does not offer CarPlay or Android Auto at this time. That said, it is easy to understand why the Q50 sells so well. It is very, very well priced, as we'll see when we start taking a look at the competition. First up, we have the BMW 330i, and this really is the direct competitor to the 300 horsepower version of the Q50. That's because the 400 horsepower version of the Q50 is what competes with the 340i. At $40,250, the 330i is more expensive than the base Q50, and we get a little bit less standard equipment in the 330 as well. When it comes to overall handling ability, the two models are fairly close. The Q50 carries a little bit more of its weight up front, but overall the Q50 hides that very well. Fuel economy is a little bit higher on the BMW, maintenance costs seem to be a little bit lower on the Infiniti. Seat comfort depends on which model you get, but you will find a little bit more room in the back of the Q50 versus the 3 Series. The big difference starts to happen when you add options to the 330. BMW's option scheme tends to be a little bit more expensive than what we see over on the Infiniti side, so if you like to add a lot of options to your vehicle, it's going to be more expensive with the BMW than the Infiniti, although it is worth noting that those gadgets and gizmos are going to be a little bit more polished and a little bit more current on the BMW than with the Infiniti. Next up we have the Lexus IS350. This is one of the last remaining naturally aspirated options in this segment. That's pretty obvious when it comes to performance. The Q50 is definitely going to be faster 0-60 to 60 than the Lexus IS. It's also going to be very noticeable during passing situations. Off-the-line acceleration is absolutely excellent in the Q50 thanks to the very aggressive first gear, and even in the higher-end gears you're still going to notice a pretty big difference between it and the Lexus. The Lexus is also more expensive at $41,830, and even though the Lexus costs more, we don't necessarily get more standard equipment in that model. Like the Infiniti, we don't find CarPlay or Android Auto inside the cabin of the Lexus, but we do find Lexus's latest safety systems standard in all models. That's something that we don't see in the Q50. Next up we have one of the other value entries in this segment, the Acura TLX. It starts notably less expensive than the Q50 at $36,200, but it's important to keep in mind that that gets you the front-wheel drive TLX. And the more appropriate competitor to the Q50, even in rear-wheel drive form, would be the all-wheel drive TLX. That would set you back $38,200, and even though it does use Acura's latest super handling all-wheel drive system, it's still not going to handle like the Q50. The Q50 is a solid rear-wheel drive luxury vehicle, and therefore its driving dynamics are going to be closer to the BMW 3 Series and the Mercedes-Benz C-Class and the Lexus IS than the likes of the Acura TLX or base versions of the Volvo S60. Acura recently gave the TLX an interior and exterior refresh, but it's important to keep in mind that Acura in general, and the TLX in specific, fall sort of a half step below the main entries in this segment. Now that's not just because the TLX is a front-wheel drive vehicle, because the Audi A4 and the Volvo S60 start as front-wheel drive vehicles, but their overall content, the overall luxury touches, gizmos, gadgets, etc. that we find in those models are more keeping with this segment than what we see in the TLX. Speaking of the Audi A4, it's our next competitor, and if you get the model with all-wheel drive, it's going to set you back $40,500. In this video, we're talking about the all-wheel drive version of the A4, because like the TLX, the A4 starts as a front-wheel drive vehicle. And in order to be a dynamic competitor to the Q50, we really do need to look at the all-wheel drive version. 
When it comes to performance, the A4 is excellent for a base model in this segment, but it does fall behind the Q50 with the 3 liter turbo engine. That shouldn't be too surprising because the Infiniti of course gives us more power. Audi's engine lineup is a little bit different than some of the competition because there are fewer power levels. We have the base A4 with its 2 liter turbocharged engine, and then we hop up into the S4 which is considerably faster, and of course considerably more expensive, starting at $51,400. When it comes to the latest gadgets, gizmos, luxury touches, and active safety features, the Audi wins hands down. But you're definitely going to pay more for those features in the Audi than in the Infiniti. The Infiniti is an excellent buy. It's also going to be the better handling option and the better performing option when compared to the base A4. Obviously the Audi S4 is going to be the better performing and better handling vehicle, but that vehicle really does compete with the Infiniti Q50 Red Sport. Now it's time for our bottom line. There are obviously a good number of reasons that you might want to buy the Q50 over the competition. It's an excellent buy. The 3 liter engine is a great, great engine. Excellent performance. It sounds great. Fuel economy is reasonable. And of course the Q50 is very reliable overall. It's a very solid luxury entry. But on the other hand, there are definitely compelling reasons to buy the competition. The Audi S4 has the latest in Audi's gadgetry, and the BMW 3 Series is an excellent all-around competitor. Thanks to the well-rounded nature of the 3 Series, the fact that we get excellent fuel economy in the 330i, not to mention the 330e, the fact that it has a very generous trunk, and of course BMW's latest iDrive system means that it is still my top pick in this segment. Of course, if you're looking for one of the best buys, then look no further than the Infiniti Q50. And I think that the 3.0T really is the sweet spot in the Q50 lineup. It's notably less expensive, a little bit less exciting admittedly than the Red Sport 400, but it's not really that much more expensive than the base 2 liter turbo engine. And of course you get a smoother, more powerful 3 liter V6 versus the 2 liter turbos that we find in most of the competition. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. Be sure and click that subscribe button down there at the bottom of your screen. Also find us over at patreon.com if you want to support this channel, and I hope you do. Then head over to facebook.com slash and see what we're driving this week.